Do you understand how this works? And they're sick and twisted. They're like spoiled brat children, drunk. You understand? And they, they need to be reprimanded. But in, historically, the only reprimand they would ever accept was one of violence. But, you see, they were always able to escape the violence themselves. They could hide in their ivory towers. I mean, these people, remember, they control the money supply. They can afford to hire private armies. If the public army won't, military, won't do their dirty work, do their bidding, which a lot of, you know, we got a lot of God-fearing military personnel in America. So that, that's a saving grace for us in America. And the same with the law enforcement. So they won't do something. If it gets too sketchy, they're going to say, wait a minute, th this reeks. I know this is unconstitutional or it's ungodly or un-American or something else. But these people can afford to hire their own armies. And historically, I mean, go back thousands of years, it's been the same crap, the same mentality caliber of people with the same characteristics as are in control now. So they've always had their places they can run off to and be protected by private security if necessary. You get it? And they got the same thing today, except it's all public. We all know about the COG, the continuity of government. We all know they've got virtual underground cities built. They're ready. I mean, if they they say, hey, we got to start, you know, lobbing nukes around and, you know, we got to get Russia or China or whatever and Sorry, but, you know, we're going to be safe. There's going to be a lot of collateral damage. Yeah, they're going to hit civilian targets. I mean, because that's where we've got, you know, some of our weapons bases is, in, you know, pop in, in uh, densely populated areas. So, yeah, there's going to be huge amounts of collateral. We're sorry, but, you know, it's in the name of freedom and, you know, you know, the land of the free and home of the brave. And, you know, sorry, we just have to do this. But we're going underground to be safe because we're VIPs. We're, we're very important people. We're, we're the leaders, the rulers. So, you know, I mean, any of your relatives that might be left after the nuclear holocaust, um, you know, you certainly want them to have, you know, us in charge, right, when all is said and done. I mean, that is, you know, that if you could see into the minds of the, the sickest Evil geniuses out there. This is the kind of sick, perverted crap they think. Okay, you got to think, you know, like a criminal. If you want to catch a criminal, it's like these detectives in criminology. You got to get into the mind of these sickos. Very unpleasant task. It really is. But, I mean, what's the alternative? Being ignorant. And like Christ said, he said, be ye as shrewd as serpents, but as innocent as doves. Yeah, you got to be as, you know, try to get a step ahead of these people is is tricky. That's why it's so important to have a close relationship with God and pray and say, God, I want to see things from your point of view. I want your beliefs. I want your values instilled in me. So I have something of true value to offer others. And I can set an example. I can teach and preach the right things and lead people in the right direction, your direction. I'm not, it's not coming from me. I'm just taking advice from you. And I'm conveying it to others because that's the only sound advice out there is what comes from the Spirit of God. I want to know right from wrong. I want to be certain, absolutely certain. And you could be certain that money is not a creation of God. It's a creation of evil men to subjugate, to subdue, to enslave what in their sick and twisted minds are lesser men. It's a scam. It's a game. Look, we're the most intelligent creature on earth by far and away. Nobody would argue against that truth, that fact. It's irrefutable, incontrovertible. An unequivocal fact, truth. Yet we, no other creature has any use, use for money, and if they could understand it even this much, they'd say, no thanks, thanks, but no thanks, every one of them. But yet we can't pull ourselves away from it. That could be done gradually over some time because most people can't. Cause, oh, I just can't. How could a society manage without money? I, you just, eh, they just can't. Eh, I can't oh, it makes my head hurt. Eh. So they don't even bother thinking about it because of your conditioning. Because of your programming. It's deeply instilled in all of us. We're all money lovers to some degree, so we're all evil to some degree because money is the root of all evil. 
And the only answer is getting off the junk, man, that we're all mainlining. It's lethal, man. You look at the stuff people do for money. You say, well, that's their problem. I can handle it. So if there's a few weak links in the chain of humanity, that's their problem. you got to get used to Money's here to stay. Get used to it because the rich, I mean, they would love that. Uh, they they love their lives in this world. It, the money thing has worked very well. They're rolling in dough, man. They can have all the skilled craftsmen out there working on their mansions day in and day out, taking them away from building affordable housing for regular people, right? I mean, what would we do with all, all the precious investors out there? What would we do? Sick, man. Value. Oh, the value of your house went up, and that's so good. Not talking about the fact that, hey, one man's value is another man's burden. That's it. it it's a higher cost for somebody, a higher price to pay. That's bad for somebody else. The opposite of good. Yet that's the paradigm I'm supposed to accept and run with. And that wealth imbalance just keeps getting more and more acute, keeps expanding and growing as they move up the rungs of the ladder to get fresh blood. Hey, we can't let these people get ahead because we depend on tenants. We need to fill those rentals, man. You know, hey, we got to keep people down, trapped under our thumb. They can't get ahead. They can't become homeowners. We can't allow that. You see, so they're never going to gradually accept getting off money. Okay, they want more and more relevance. So the money lovers at the uppermost echelons of power that control the purse strings, the money printers, the top politicians in the Senate and Congress, and the executive that vote to say, okay, we'll borrow more money from the Fed. And the Fed, all too happy. Sure, absolutely, we'll loan you more money. But, you know, we, we're, arm, we're the arm breakers. We're, we're the leg breakers. We, we need at least to get paid the interest, the minimum payment like your credit card. The minimum interest on that, Ed Watt keeps growing and growing and growing. And they never, in the mainstream media, you never hear them talk about how they're paying that. Do you, how, how often do you hear them talking about currency debasement and who that's hurting most on the social economic scale? How that scam works? How is it we're creating more and more billionaires, more and more rich people, that the wealth imbalance keeps growing? They're not, you hear anybody talking about that on the mainstream media? Because all these people are making gobs of dough that are on the television set. And they don't want to, their status quo. That's a state of affairs and they want to stay there. So they don't want to enlighten you. They think they're smarter than you. You understand how this works? That's how these people roll. They think they're smart because they're all get the, all their money and they're in control and they got it all. And hey, I won the game. You know, it's a, winners and losers, all this crap they feed down. That's what it's about. Sorry, you're a loser. But hey, you know, you could go to school. You could get a good education. You could get a good job. You could make a lot of money. You could inherit it. Um, you might win the lottery. I don't know, but, you know, I'm hey, so sorry for you. I feel so bad that you're poor because we all know that's bad. That's that's immoral. That's There's something wrong. You're defective. That's a moral issue because you're on welfare. You, this, that, oh, oh. But the people that created it, the poverty deliberately to keep people down, to oppress. It's not an archaic term. It's very relevant term. That's what it's about. You not getting ahead. People say, what, do you want to pay minimum wage workers $30 an hour? Because that would be approximately the equivalent value of a dollar back in the early 60s. They say, no, minimum wage could be 50 cents an hour now. If there was this much fairness in the land, this much progress in terms of true capitalism, supply and demand capitalism, whereby it's gotten nothing but easier and easier and easier, state-of-the-art tools and equipment out there to produce all the things we want and need. We're, we're at the apex of the industrial age. You know how easy it is to produce all the stuff human beings on planet Earth want and need? You see, it's all lies. It's all made up. It's a scheme. It's a scam. It's fraud. It's a way to cheat from you, cheat you and steal from you. That's all it is. To keep you down. To make sure you don't get ahead. 
That's the whole scam. That's the way it works. Then they throw a few crumbs, uh, set up these welfare organizations, where it turns out only the rich ever benefit from those anyhow. You know, if supermarkets weren't getting food stamps, you know they'd have to lower their prices a lot. And the same with housing. If they took away that Section 8, oh, my God, landlords would be scrambling. The prices of rentals would plummet overnight. Mortgages with prices for houses would, would plummet. So who do these welfare programs really benefit in the, in the scheme of things in the long run? Okay, you see where I'm going? You got to know the stuff I know. And that's a fact, friends. What I'm telling you is the truth. That's the way it is. I am not being unduly cynical. I'm telling you the way it is. And it is evil with a capital E. Evil. That's what. That's the rule of law in the land. That's it, man. That's the way it works. And you got to know it. You got to face the truth. You can run, but you can't hide. You're gonna say, "I wasted my life living a lie, willful delusion, willful ignorance, willful stupidity, willful cowardice," because I just my, made my head hurt. I just couldn't. So I just went to my minimum wage job and. You know, I waited for my parents to die and inherited their house. And I'm just going with the path of least resistance, going with the flow, man. I just, you know, I can't, I'll, I'll have, maybe I'll have to ask for Section 8 housing myself or go on food stamps or I don't know, man. I don't, you know, maybe Joe Biden will fix it or maybe Trump will fix it or somebody's going to fix it for me and everything's going to get straightened out. Evil. Things have been going downhill my whole life since the assassination of JFK when I was five years old. He was getting rid of the Federal Reserve, the money printers, controllers. It's a quasi-public-private thing. You understand? No private individuals at all should be involved in the printing of our money. None whatsoever. We talk about the multi-billionaires out there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. What if you own the perpetual patent, the perpetual rights to printing the money? You tell me how much you're worth, how much you're going to leave your children. You're not only a, a multi-trillionaire, you're an infinite heir. That's who's in control. So if they get their way, you talk about a dystopia that we're headed into. Oh, my God. These people, they don't know. You see, they're drunk. They're spoiled. They need to be reprimanded. But they depend on violence. And I'm telling you, friends, we've got to not resort to violence. The last thing anybody wants to do is resort to violence. Because it's like a spring being coiled, being being compressed. Okay, and you want to let God do that. The heavy lifting has to come from God. If there is to be violence used, then let God do it with pinpoint accuracy. And let him take the blame. Be responsible for any violence. No human being. No, we, that's judge, jury, and execution, or no violence. That just acts as this pressure relief valve. No. So keep it back. Just gain knowledge and wisdom, and there's your empowerment. Knowledge is power. And then you become God's servant and friend, and that's the best you can do, is just speak truth to power and anybody else that will listen. And spread the word, spread the truth, say, hey, it's a scam, it's a scheme, it's a way to rip you off. We could get off money gradually, but they won't allow it. They won't allow it. And I already explained, I mean, minimum wage today could be 50 cents, 25 cents an hour, but be worth more than that dollar an hour in the early 1960s. That's if we were making this much true progress according to capitalism, true capitalism involving supply and demand. If we were living like a civilized society, like a family, caring about each other, that's love. We're not doing the greatest commandment of all that Christ gave us. He said the law and the prophets are summed up in this. That means Moses. Moses was a prophet, right? Who was Moses? The Ten Commandments. I mean, it's all included in that. Love God above all else with every fiber of your being because God gave you your being, your essence, your life, your existence. And so it's only right to honor God above all else. You know, honor a human being above all else? No. And then love one another. So love God above all else, love one another. You follow those two commandments, all the laws of man will fall into place, all those that make sense, that is. 
You'll be pleasing God and finding happiness. It's the same with your parents. What do you? What does God want? God wants us to enjoy our lives, but He wants us to be invested in real things, eternal things, things that are going to last, like the soul of men. So our values have to be approved from on high. They have to be in line. We have to be on the same page, see through the same eyes as our Creator in terms of beliefs and values.